So good evening, everyone. I want to say thanks for being here tonight. I do appreciate it. I know that, you know, your Tuesday nights are probably something you would rather be doing than than uh, talking about the market or something along those lines. But we really appreciate you being here um, an awful lot. So thank you from uh, myself, Rick, um, Ed. Um, we really appreciate you being here and thanks for taking the time. So tonight I want to, this is the only slide you're going to see. What we're going to do is just jump straight into some charts and I'm going to talk a little bit about trend just a little bit. First about marking up a chart just real quickly and then about um, finding and, and um, knowing when a trend is is a trend that we can get into. Now if I were to just draw out this this chart right right here that we have in Las Vegas Sands, you can see that we had a major downtrend in play here. Okay. Now that downtrend did not break until right here where we finally pushed above, we pulled back, held it as support, and then buyers started to pick this up right here. Now, a question I get all the time is, I say, buyer stepping in. That's what we want to look for. And a lot of people get confused by, what do you mean by buyer stepping in? Buyer stepping in is that pattern, <clears throat> that candlestick, that setup that you like. But we want to wait for downtrend to break. And it can get real confusing at times, right? It can get really, really confusing. Um, and particularly for new traders, it can be a really, really difficult. Uh, just a second, guys. I'm going to have her um, log in again. Okay, thank you guys. So we're, we're looking for stocks that are either trending or stocks that are reversing trend. Now, Rick showed a something the other day, and I've been talking about it since, since he, he showed this. And honestly, Rick says, well, he kind of stumbled on it. But I got to tell you, I think this is kind of a stroke of genius and um, at risk of making Rick's head really, really big. I'm going to just call him a genius here for coming up with this. And this is one of the best things I've ever seen for a long time in helping folks identify trend. Okay, so first off, I'm going to show you how to set this up. One thing that you want to do, and by the way, before anyone asks, I don't think you can do this on toss charts unless you have someone write a custom code for it. Okay, I don't think this is transferable to other software packages. Okay, I don't know how you can do that except have someone write the custom code for it. Okay, so... Right now, I you know I use TC two thousand. The majority of folks that are members hit run candlesticks um, and right way options use TC two thousand. So um, I've got you know really no interest or desire of trying to create a whole new custom scan or not a custom scan but a custom code to create a custom indicator for other platforms. Please feel free. Okay, please feel free to talk to anyone out there that you know that can write this stuff, okay, for those other platforms. But please understand, we're not providing it, okay, for other platforms. All right. So let's take a look. Yeah, there's folks out there that can code it. I just, I have, I just don't care to. Um, I, I don't use toss charts. I don't use anything else. I use this. And um, so does Rick and, again, the majority of folks in here. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look. Ed, Ed just said, don't, duck, don't talk to him about it. <laughs> <laughs> Not too interested in doing that himself. 
Okay, so here's what we do. If you guys have seen it, first let me show you what it looks like. It's a very, very simple indicator, and all it is is a trend following indicator. Okay, we're just following the trend. All right, this isn't a is not a buy sell indicator. It is not a buy sell indicator. Everyone write that down. This is not a buy sell indicator. Okay. <clears throat> so, does uh, sound good for everyone? It looks like Mitch is still having trouble. I don't know why that would be. Okay. Uh, James, TC2000 itself, is they are their own brokerage now. So I guess the answer to that is yes. I don't use them as a brokerage. I use Thinkorswim and, and Tradehawk. Um, but TC2000 charts are head and shoulders above any other trading or charting platform I've ever found. And so um, that's why I use TC2000. I don't mind paying some money. As a matter of fact, I've told folks I would never tell TC2000 this. But if they charge me twice what they charge for this, I would easily pay it. I would happily pay it because it is still the best program out there. Yeah, TC2000 includes the volatility stop indicator. Okay, so let me show you this. First thing you want to do, I'm going to shut this indicator off here just a little bit. First thing that you want to do is put a 17 exponential moving average on your chart. Okay, 17 exponential moving average. Just put a 17 exponential moving average on your chart. And after it's on your chart, you no longer need to look at it. You can turn it off. So we don't need to look at that 17 exponential moving average. What we're going to do is we're going to take our volatility stop that has these settings 10 1.5 okay for the settings and instead of normally it's wrapped around price action the price history of the chart it would look like this what we're going to do is we're going to base this around that 17 exponential moving average okay so it's a very, very simple setup. It doesn't require any custom anything. Um, you know, that's why we're sharing it with everyone because it's so simple and easy to put together. All right. But let me show you what this thing does. Does anyone notice, I'm going to remove all of my drawings. Everyone notice in this chart how clearly it marks out when the trend is down and when the trend has started to move up. Pretty darn clear here, right? Very easy to identify. So I'm going to give you two rules. Two very simple rules. Never consider a long trade unless you're above the green on this indicator. Rule number two, never consider a short trade unless you're below the red on this indicator. Okay, it's giving us those very clear transition points. Now I'm going to say this one more time. This is not a buy sell indicator. Okay, what tr generates your your trade is the price action of the chart. Now you guys know that I love following trends. I'm a trend trader. As a matter of fact, you can write this down because this was the thing that changed my trading life. When I was ready to quit, wasn't making money, was ready to leave this business because it, I just wasn't getting it. It finally dawned on me that there can be no easier way to make money in the market than to find a trending chart or trending stock and just wait for the next entry not predict it, don't do any predicting, no need to do any predicting, just wait for the next entry. 
Okay. So take a look at this move right here. We move from red where we were downtrending. We move from red to green. We cross over. We do not buy this crossover. Okay. Don't buy it. Why is that? Why don't we buy that crossover? Because at this point, we have no proof that it can hold it as support. How many times have you seen a stock break out? Stock breaks out. We have a nice little move going on. Stock's been going down. Stock starts to go up. And we get all excited about that run up. We buy it right here. And then the next move of the stock is right back down to a new low. We get stopped out of that trade. Two of my basic rules, you guys can write these down. Only buy stocks that are at or near price support. Rule number two, only sell stocks or close long trades when the price is at or near price resistance. Okay, so let's take this, let's play this out. Stock moves up. I am not worried about finding this. I'm not worried about chasing it. I am not worried about that one iota. Because until this point, this is a downtrend, until this can prove a higher low and show me that buyers are going to support that new price. This right here is the very first evidence of an uptrend. And the only time that I'm really interested in the stock. Now it can do that in two ways. It can move up and pull back. We call those in right way options, hit and run candlesticks as pullback opportunities. Okay, pullback opportunity, we wait for the buy signal to be produced and we look for that entry. Very close here. The reason we wanna look for it close to support is because our stop loss is very tight. We have very small risk in this trade. What I used to do years ago, how many how many folks would would tell um, would say that this has plagued them for a long time? You look at this pattern right here, there's a buy signal produced right in this area, but you don't take this trade because the only thing you can think about on this position is this price resistance. And so we wait, we wait for the stock to move up above that level, we buy that trade. By the way, when you do that, you're taking much more risk in the position, only to buy that position right before the stock pulls back to find its trend again. And you get stopped out. Okay. you get stopped out. So this used to happen to me all the time because I was plagued by this idea that I couldn't buy at support or I shouldn't buy at support, that there was too much risk that this might move up here and fail, that I never took the risk down here. I always bought it up here and so many times got stopped out in the pullback. Big change in your trading if you just learn to follow the trend. Buy the stock at or near price support. Do not buy the stock at or near price resistance. Okay. The next pattern that can happen here is the stock is trending, got a moving moving up trend, and instead of doing the pullback opportunity, it does the consolidation over the trend, or what I call the pop out of the box pattern. Nice little tight consolidation, moves sideways over to find its trend, and then the stock moves up. By the way, almost every single one of my trades I've built an entire career out of trading these two patterns. 
Okay. Almost every single one of my trades are based on that pullback opportunity or the pop out of the box pattern. In a stock proving trend. Okay. In a stock proving trend. Okay, so right over here, you would have to decide if you look at this trade over here, could I buy this position in this pullback? Well, this buy signal here might have been a little bit difficult because of the gap up. But if you do a little analysis of the price action here and have just placed an alert right across this price right here. See how all of these candles right in here touch this level? All we need is that push above here to show us that buyers are stepping in when we've got several days, four days, in this little tight area. And then the stock starts pushing up. Okay? So we pick up this trade in here someplace and allow that trade to move up. Notice that this stock moved up. And what did it do? This one is a little bit sloppy here, but it essentially consolidated over to trend before it continued on up. So right here in this chart, pullback opportunity, okay, right here, pop out of the box type pattern over here. It's not a true pop out of the box pattern, but a nice tight consolidation in a range in that before the stock moved higher. Okay, let's look at a short trade. Short trade is going to be identical. Just flip it upside down in the chart. And you can see it right here. Stock breaks down green to red. All right, now I'm going to tell you right now, this breakdown right here in this consolidation was a potential setup. But there's no chance I would have taken that because of this gap down into here. I would have missed that completely. Wouldn't have even tried. Okay. However, I might have caught this move up toward resistance. Shooting star top, spinning top doji, and then the move lower into here. Okay, so you can see how we just continue to trend. And every one of these points where we move back toward resistance is another opportunity for a short trade. Right across here, enter this trade, break of this support. Move this trend down and just stay in the trend down. So over and over, these price patterns repeat themselves. One of the things that's always been difficult is identifying those trends. Okay, I've done it for years and years and years. I'll shut this off just for a second. I've done it this way. I've done it by drawing up the chart. I look for the trend, I follow the trend, I wait for trends to break, and I draw up that chart. Now I know when you're new, this is difficult. This is a, this is a, a step that a lot of folks, because it takes time to do this, okay? It's a step a lot of people fail on because if we start drawing up these charts, the price action clears itself up. You can see lots of things in a chart once you start putting trends and support and resistance on the chart. Price is revealing itself if we let it do it rather than try to predict it. Okay, so now with this little indicator, all we have to do is put this indicator on here and follow the price action of the chart. No predicting, no chasing, no rushing, no need to do anything fancy here whatsoever. Okay. Uh, Malcolm, I just did the volatility stop. Oh, the VIPS, the VIP, VIPS chart. Yeah, we can, um, sure, we can talk about that. Okay. Now, when we're above the green right down here, and by the way, guys, if is anyone here not subscribed to my YouTube channel?
could you do me a favor? Let me let me pull up pull up YouTube here for give me just a second here and pull up a YouTube channel. And I'll give you the link. The reason I'm bringing this up is not, you know, for any other reason, but to say that I have posted some videos lately. Last Tuesday night's e-learning session, I did a class on um, er patterns that every chart, every trader should know. Okay. Spent a lot of time on a pattern called the round of bottom breakout. And then I did a follow up to that on, on um, Sunday. I think it was said no Monday Monday I posted it on Monday I did a follow-up to that based on a lot of the questions and things that I got so you can go in there and find those two videos that will help complement this video here okay or this education here so please go over there you know um, subscribe I really appreciate it and when you do click that bell icon when you click the subscribe sub excuse me subscribe button click the bell icon as well what that will do will, is make sure that you'll be notified okay notified when I post another video all right and by the way, there's, believe it or not, I now have more than 450 videos on YouTube. So you've got, there's plenty of content there. <laughs> Lots of things for you to watch. Okay. And, and, and learn. Okay. So thank you for those who have already subscribed. I really appreciate that. Now, <clears throat> Um, in those classes, I talked about what's, what we call the rounded bottom breakout pattern. This is the rounded bottom, um, um, excuse me, not on this one. Let's go to like Roku. I was mentioning Roku today um, on a couple of things. Let's move all, the, all of our lines here, get rid of all of that. And you can see in here that Roku is setting up a potential rounded bottom breakout pattern here. Oh, that's weird. A rounded bottom breakout pattern here on the chart. And that's where we break. We've been downtrending. We break above the 50 day moving average. We see all of these moving averages starting to round back up, providing support to the price action of the chart. Oh, I know why this is not right because I'm looking at a, there we go. I'm looking at a, um, uh, I was looking at a four hour chart. This is uh, the basis of the round and bottom breakout. Now this isn't a true round and bottom breakout because the 200 is not far enough away on this chart. But the same price pattern still exists here. A true R or RBB might be something like, um, uh, well, there's just a ton of charts out there right now in this RBB type pattern, crossing above the 50 day moving average, trying to hold this area as support and showing these moving average squeeze areas right here. Okay. Just ton of them like EA. EA rounded bottom breakout. There's that 200 way up there. This thing has the potential, in my opinion, to move up somewhere in here, 19, 20% just on the stock itself. Okay. So you want to pay attention to those. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. You want to pay attention to some of these very important patterns in the market. Now, if we combine this pattern with this indicator, look what happens here. Can anyone see the potential entry point in this trade? I mean, is it even, is it even that hard to find that potential entry point right here? Anybody see where we could have easily found the short trade? Pushing down, rally back, show failure right in here. There's the short. How about this for the potential long? Buying, stepping in, and taking the long trade up. Very clear, very simple to identify. We know if we just connect these lines up, we have an uptrend. Notice how that uptrend works. Stock moves up sharply away from its uptrend, consolidates back over to its trend. If it doesn't consolidate over its, to its trend, it's likely going to pull back to its trend. 
That is the most repeatable pattern in the market. And with this indicator, it makes it very, very easy to identify those trending patterns. Okay. And by the way, it works on every single time frame. Okay. Every single time frame this works on. Let me prove that to you. I was pointing out to the folks on Rightway Options during class today. We went to the diamonds and I grabbed a 15 minute chart of the diamonds using this indicator. By the way, this blue and red are just showing me um, close of the day prior, open of this morning. That's all those two lines are showing me. But if you take a look at this chart, we can see where the short trade potentially set up here, right? If we just lay out this chart just a little bit with this tool, red, green crosses over red, we look right in here, we see price support in this chart. Is it pretty obvious when we do that where the potential entry signal short was today? And how easy it was to look in this chart and see target one at price support, filling the gap, target two, right down here. Works on a 15 minute. Look what happened here toward the end of the day. Rally back above, trying to hold support. There's no buy signal in here yet, or no clear buy signal in here yet. Remember, anything over here in this gray area, this is aftermarket. Okay, this is a price action that's going on after the market close. So there's no buy signal in here on, on a daily yet, but it could set up. We do know on the 15 minute, it has crossed over. Okay, simple, easy setup. How about the long setup here? Red crosses over green, consolidates. Nice, tight, pop out of the box pattern. Set an alert above that pattern. Enter into that trade, look at this trend. If you don't catch it here, no problem. Could you have caught it here? Gapped up, pulled back. There's our price support. There's buyers stepping in above the green and there's the run. All we have to do is look at the details of the price action of the chart. Stop trying to predict the direction of the chart. Just wait for the trade to come to you. Okay, just wait for the trade to come to you. We don't have a, a particular name for this. This is the volatility stop indicator. Okay, this is the volatility stop indicator wrapped around a 17 EMA exponential moving average. I've not given it a name. I know Rick was talking about that today. He really hasn't given it a name, except I've been calling it a trend indicator. And by the way, that's all this is. It's not a buy sell indicator. It is a trend indicator. Okay. It is a trend indicator. Trend indicator, okay. <laughs> it's the trend indicator. Uh, uh. Yes, I've tried the 34 EMA. 34 EMA puts it a little bit far away from this price of the stock. The 17 tightens it right up puts it right into that place where we can see those really good patterns in these stocks, okay? Really, really good potential patterns. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of other charts. What if we looked at charts on a weekly basis? Does this show us good patterns on a weekly basis? I mean, holy cow, right? This is just the diamonds. Red turns to green, moves over to its trend. We wait for the entry signal into this trade. I probably would have entered this one right here. My stop loss underneath here, I might have been stopped out 
because of the volatility that was right in here. But this big bullish engulfing candle right here would be a good reason to get back into the trade on a weekly basis. It moves up and away from its trend, consolidates over to its trend, and then does the same thing again. Moves up, consolidates over toward its trend, and does the same thing again. Does a PBO this time, pulls back into its trend. We wait for that new entry into this trade. Notice right here, this really tight, four day pop out of the box type pattern that formed right here. There's the entry signal, right off a trend. This works on any time frame. Works on any time frame. What about the sell-off? Did it work on the sell-off? Cross down, cross back up, but we never proved. Notice that this never turned green. We never proved price support. Ever. In this whole move, we didn't prove price support. Consequently, we failed. Okay, moved right on lower. Okay, so very, very simple to follow on every single time frame. I highly recommend you guys use this and put this on your chart. Now I'm gonna show you something that I showed RWO folks today, and I think it's kind of cool, and I'm starting to use this a little bit more. Well, actually, quite a bit <laughs> more. I'm gonna actually um, go to the chart I created in RWO, and I'm gonna reduce this down so you guys can actually see my in the entire screen, okay? So what I've done is I've, I've, here's the same diamond chart, okay? On a daily with the trend indicator on there. By the way, I've got that dimmed down so it's not so dark. I wanna see the price candles a little bit more. But there is the trend indicator showing us on the diamonds daily. Cross over, consolidate over to trend, buyers step in, there's the move. Okay, very clean, simple chart setup. Okay, now right beside it, has anyone ever used Heiken Ashi candles? Heiken Ashi candles are actually very, very simple. It's a little bit difficult to understand at first, but Heiken Ashi really stands, uh, Heiken means average, Ashi means pace in, in Japanese. Heiken Ashi, average pace. And so what this is, all these candles are, are an average of two periods, okay? So the downside to a Heiken Ashi candle is it doesn't show you the exact current price, okay? Because the candle itself is an average of two periods. Notice the actual price of the diamonds, 244. Um, 244 even, 244.36 here. It's not the perfect for following the exact price of the stock, but what it does do is clearly identifies trends. Okay, so we're using our trending tool, waiting for our buy signal to enter a position, and then we get to use the Heiken Ashi here to see how long we want to hold this trend. We had this pullback today back to the 50 day moving average. Okay, I said all morning, there's no reason to panic about this pullback. This was needed, in fact, expected to occur. Okay, the Heiken Ashi right here shows us if we were long this position, believe me on this, if I were long this position, I would have taken some profits up to here. If I had chosen to hold a little bit of the trade, I'm mostly an option trader for those of you who don't know. If maybe I'm holding one option contract left just to see what happens. And I get this pullback here. Notice I get no black candle here on the Heiken Ashi yet. I'm still okay to hold this trade. Is there anything here that says that this couldn't do what it did right here? Moved up, just did a nice little resting consolidation, 
and right on up. Okay, so we can hold trades a little bit longer, a little bit uh, without micromanaging quite so much. Now that's on a daily chart. I want to show you that this works on every single time frame. If I go to a four hour chart, I want you guys to take a look at this on here. Could we have entered into this nice little consolidating period right in here, picked up that buy signal when we popped out of that box. Here's my little box. Popped out of that box, picked up that buy signal on that four hour chart and moved on up. Notice how clean the indicator here on this side on the hike and ashy shows that strong trend. By the way, let me explain that. Strong trend up is going to be candles just like this one here. All of these candles, notice that there's no tails on these candles. No tails. So over here, while we're getting a little bit of tossing around, some black candle showing up in here, this is still showing me strong trend, okay, to stay in the position. Consolidations in the Heiken and Ashi are really awesome because it tightens, because of the averaging effect, it tightens up the consolidation extremely tight. Nice, clean consolidations in the trade. So we have the ability now with this trend indicator to not only find the good entry signals very easily, very clearly, whoops, I meant to circle up there, find those indicators clearly, but now adding the little hike and ashy in here, the ability to stay with a trend. Stay with the trend a little bit longer. Let me show you a chart and actually go to an hourly. Just to show you guys that this doesn't have to be just one time frame. CGC, anybody think you could have made money using this trend indicator right here on CGC? Nice break of a nice consolidation area right in here. Moving up and notice how we come back to trend, buyer stepping in at trend, move back to trend, buyer stepping in at trend, on that move up okay let's take a look right over here on CGC on this hourly chart how clean is that chart showing you that nice trend staying with the position there's no no variance in here where over here we have quite a little bit of noise in that chart, back and forth, some black candles showing up in those moves. Notice over here there's not one black candle in that move up. Staying with the trend when it's showing us a strong trend. Okay, very clean, simple, easy signals to trade. By the way, in the Heiken and Ashy candles, notice you get the same price patterns. Okay, the exact same price patterns occurring here. A PBO opportunity. There's your pullback to the trend. A pop out of the box opportunity. Whoops. Here is your nice little pop out of the box pattern. The same two basic patterns showing up in that chart as well. Nice and clean, simple to follow patterns. Every time frame, every platform, every, I mean, anything that you want to trade. I have run all kinds of tests on this. Literally, for the first couple of days after Rick said, hey, look at this. I have been nonstop running this against all different kinds of charts. And I gotta tell you guys, I haven't been this excited about something this simple for a long, long time. Because it's so clean, it's so easy to read. It's a simple tool for a simple setup. 
And all we have to do is wait for the trade to occur, not chase the trade, wait for the trade to occur. We all saw what happened in eBay today. And you know, I can seriously considered buying eBay on Friday, but I stuck to my rules. I, the uncertainty of the weekend and stuff, I didn't want to buy eBay. You guys see the setup that was here in eBay? Would there have been a problem to have picked up that trade here in eBay? Right there. Or even right here. Or even right there on that morning star pattern. Stop loss would have been basically the same. Okay, and you can see how nice a trade that would have been this morning. Gapping way up there. Okay, looking really, really strong, really, really clean. Okay, um, and there, right now there's just so many of these trades that are popping off. If I open up my alert console right here, these are all alerts that I have on charts right now. You can see eBay is alerted in here. It's on the list. eBay is part of that list. But take a look, I'm gonna shrink this up dramatically here. Take a look at Home Depot. Do you guys see the downtrend break here? Breaking of the downtrend. Trend holding starting to show support buyers starting to pick this up in here you like that chart how about big now big is in a downtrend break you notice that it's still in a downtrend here but you can see the same pattern red turned to green trying to break in to this big open gap on the trade pretty simple trade to identify, to see, to, to uh, maybe potential trade. There's lots of these charts right now. I mean a tremendous amount of these charts right now. And it doesn't matter if you look at them on a daily, a weekly, an hourly. Let's look at FedEx. I told everyone all week last week to keep an eye on FedEx on the hourly because I'm looking for this to break into this gap, okay? There's about a 10 point move in this gap, all right? Notice when this broke out of that gap. Stock moved up right off of the trend, pulling back again to trend. We're waiting for the next signal to move higher to, for this to just continue its move, potentially filling this gap of about 10 points in FDX. Over here on the Heiken Ashi candle on the same hourly chart, look at how clean this trend is to be able to maybe stay in these positions. Remember, this is an hourly, so there's a lot more noise in the hourly, a lot more wicks and tails. Thank you, Malcolm. Yeah, anybody that goes over there to YouTube, please do me a favor, click that subscribe button, okay? Click that subscribe button, click on that bell icon for that. Now I know these charts are a little bit small and I apologize for that because I've shrunk everything up to, and rather than trying to show you my full screen, which some, sometimes lags um, in the translation through the internet here, um, showing that smaller window um, helps improve that. But you can see how these trends continue to work in these charts on all different time frames in that volatility, uh, this trendicator, <laughs> trendicator just simply works. It works on all kinds of stocks. How about DWDP? A break, move above, green, pull back, find support. Buyers started to pick up DWDP right there. 
Notice right here we got this big black candle coming down. We're still above price support. Probably shouldn't be all that worried about this trade just yet. Look right over here. Almost no indication of breakdown with a hike in ASHI because of the averaging effect. So could this just consolidate like it did right here? And then keep it moving up in its trend? Yep, same thing in Han, same thing in just a whole bunch of charts. How about we look at GILD, GILD. Anybody see something setting up here? The potential of something setting up here. Same setup, same pattern. What about a stock that's not breaking a downtrend to the upside? What if, what if we look at something that's actually already trending? Does it work here? Looks to me like it's working. What if we looked at this on a four hour? Does it work on the four hour? What if we looked at this on an hourly chart? Does it work on the hourly chart? It's way different than the volatility stop, Sam. It's the same green and red dots, but it's wrapped around a 17 EMA. That makes it a trending indicator, not a buy sell indicator. Doesn't tell you where your stop loss should be or anything like that. What it's doing is showing you the trend, showing you those potential entry points. So if we're looking at this hourly on CRON and see this pullback in here, can you guys see that how we've kind of made this nice little consolidation right through here? What if that pops a buy signal in here? Right off of that trend. So we can look at these charts in multiple time frames, looking to set up these positions in a very clear and easy to understand way. I think this thing has so much value. I think there's so much money that could be made using this indicator. It would just blow you away of what could, could have been made. Let's take a look at a, a weekly chart. I, I show this chart a lot. But um, first, let's look at SQ. SQ is a daily trade that hit run, I mean, right way options is in. You see the pattern, break of the downtrend, starting to move up. We've got a big pullback on it today, but still holding support. Nothing wrong with that trade. By the way, there would have been nothing wrong with taking the profits on this either. Going into Friday, knowing that we probably were going to get some kind of a pullback based on the market just being overbought in the short term would have been no problem. But if you wanted to hold some of this trade for the longer term, this gives you that opportunity to do that. I took my entry based on this price alert right here. I anytime you see these pink lines on my charts, guys, that's a price alert. I see the pattern developing. I usually get an alert set long before the trade is ready to trade. I use a statement and I use this over and over again, is I make the trades come to me. I don't go to them. I find the patterns setting up, I set alerts, and I wait for the trades. <laughs> You're exactly right, Ed. Less is more. Less is more. Fewer trading, but buying the better trades. Waiting for the trades to come to you is the easier way to manage your positions. 
I did not, Mike. I did not. You guys saw me talk about it Friday afternoon or Friday during right way options, that that was a really great setup on eBay. Okay. But I didn't buy it. In fact, I used, the, and this is exactly what I said. I'm looking for a market pullback. There's a risk of a three day weekend. I'm not going to add any more trades today. So I didn't take the trade. All right. I stuck to my rules. And honestly, on lots of charts, that was the right decision to make. Just so happened this one gapped. Okay. That doesn't, that doesn't negate the fact that the price action or the price pattern was set up for the trade. <laughs> it's antisocial. <laughs> so I didn't take the trade just based on my rule that I didn't want to add any additional risk heading into the weekend. Okay, three day weekend. Here's a here's one I was looking at for a trade. Okay, you can see where my price alert is. Do you think I'm okay right now having waited? for the weekend to occur that this this pullback doesn't necessarily mean that this this trade is done okay but it also shows you i didn't predict entering that trade i didn't even try to predict entering that trade i placed my alert the trade has to alert for me to get into that position could this still become a trade absolutely could but I make the trade come to me. I don't chase the trade. Okay. And here's another cool thing. If I blow that up so you can see that dot, notice that this big pullback hasn't fooled this indicator just yet. Hasn't turned red yet. So when I said, is there still a possibility for this trade? I'm going to say yes, there's still a possibility for this trade. Okay, anybody have any quick questions on this? I'll, I'll answer a few questions. I don't want to keep you guys a long time tonight because I think this thing is pretty self-explanatory. If you put it on the charts and start looking through charts, you're going to be amazed at what you see. You'll be amazed at what you see because it just gives you that nice, clear indicator. Now, I don't care. I have no concern. I'm not telling you you have to use the hike and ashy. Okay? You don't have to use the hike and ashy. Never going to tell you that you have to do anything. Okay? That's for you to decide. What I can tell you is the hike and ashy. Look at this down move that occurred in here and how cleanly that down move was developed here but how choppy and all over the place it was in this candle chart. Had you entered this short trade, maybe right in here after this failure, see the, all those tails right there lining up? Catch that failure right in here. Could you have traded that all the way down and managed that pretty easily? It sure looks like it to me. Okay, pretty simple. <laughs> pretty simple way to manage that trade. Now I can tell you honestly, there's probably, there's really no chance in the world I would have held this all the way through. I'm just not that kind of trader. Most of the time on a down move, when it's moving down that sharply, I'm scaling out, taking profits. That doesn't mean I wouldn't hold a small lot of the position. If I went in with 10 contracts short, I would be scaling out on the way down, taking profits as we go, okay? That doesn't necessarily say that I wouldn't have held one or two contracts or something to see how far it would go, but I'm telling you, I wouldn't have been holding any large position in your trade, in the trade. Okay, so any time frame, anything that you want to look at, I want you guys to put this on your charts and I want you to test it. Don't take my word for it. 
I want you to look at a lot of charts. I want you to see that this is showing you trend. I want you to identify that this could be something really great for your trading. Is it, is it mistake free? It's not. It's not mistake free. Okay. It's not mistake free. But is it a real clear indicator? We still have to do the price action work. Remember, it's not a buy sell indicator. It's a trending indicator. It's showing us when we're okay to be looking for long trades and it's okay to be looking for short trades. Okay. I've not created a scan for this yet. Crispy Critter, or used to go by, yeah, well, Crispy Critter, yeah. Um, I haven't created a scan for it, and the reason is, guys, I usually work from a watch list. Yeah, it wouldn't be hard to do. It would be simple to do. It would be really simple to do. But I just, I kind of work from a watch list and, and flip through that watch list. Um, every day. So I'm working from a, a qualified watch list. And what I mean by qualified watch list has plenty of volume, the kind of volume I want. It's the prices that I can that I can trade. Okay, so I'm not wasting time with stocks that don't have good volume, or good option volume, by the way, doesn't have good price action in the chart. So for example, lots of biotechs and stuff like that. I don't, I see them on the chart and I usually just pass right by. I let folks know that, hey, there's a setup maybe coming in here. I don't take them. It's rare that I take them. I want the simple trades. I don't, I don't need anything that's jumping all over the place. Not interested in it. I want deliberate price action. Nice, simple, deliberate price action. And that's it. Follow the trend. Find a trade that's trending. Let me show you a chart. I'm going to go back here to my old setup so you can see this a little bit better. Go to Microsoft. Look at that weekly chart. Imagine having entered a trade here. There's our downtrend break, moves up, consolidates over to trend. Buyers step in here with a nice buy signal. So we're looking at prices right around the 50 area, 55, 56 area maybe, 57. I don't care wherever you want to place that in there. And taking this to 100. Can you make money with this indicator? I'm telling you guys, I have never seen something that gives such nice, clear trends. Easy to read, easy to identify. And stay with these positions. It is absolutely awesome. Take trades like SQ. I mentioned SQ. We're in a trade, but look at the weekly. Anybody could have, you think you could have made some money on this? Okay. How do you set up TC2000 or how do you set up this indicator on TC2000, Frank? I'll show this one more time. And I did this at the beginning. That's why I was waiting at the beginning. I don't want to repeat myself over and over and over. Okay. You guys come late. You know, you just miss out. You're going to have to watch the video. All right. But I'll do this one more time. You put a 17 exponential moving average on your chart. 
okay? Once that 17 exponential moving average is on your chart, just a second. Once that 17 exponential moving average is on your chart, I want you to shut it off. Go to your edit, take your opacity, and take it to zero. You don't need it anymore. Just leave it there, okay? Put your volatility stop indicator on the chart. This is a volatility stop indicator. Volatility stop settings, 10 periods, one and a half multiplier. Uptrend green, downtrend red. Okay? Notice how the volatility stop indicator based around the price history looks like this. Okay? It's showing us those good stop loss locations for swing trades. Okay? It's also helping us see trend. Right? So I've just put another volatility stop indicator on the chart. And instead of wrapping it around price, you click this button, you wrap it around the 17 EMA. Okay? Instead of price, you change it to the 17 EMA. Say OK. And then turn it on. There's your indicator. Okay. Very, very simple to put on your chart in TC2000. I mean, it's so simple, it's ridiculous. Okay. If you guys don't have TC2000, anybody here that doesn't use TC2000 and needs a reason to buy TC2000 for your charts, I think you got one here. Okay. Just a second. I'm going to give you a coupon. TC2000 gave me a coupon here because I did some classes. In fact, I talk about TC2000 a lot. Whoops. Just a second. There it is. If you're interested in TC2000, it takes $25 off your annual for TC2000. If you buy the gold package, it's going to be like $274 for um, the gold package. And then you have to add on, if you want it to be real time, you have to add, it's like 14 something um, for um, real time feed. Okay. But you will not be able to set this up to my knowledge unless a custom indicator is built, programmed. That's what I mean, programmed. Because they don't have the ability in, in, in TOS to take an indicator and wrap it around another that I know of. I've used TOS for a long time. I think you would just have to write a program to build the custom indicator. That could probably be done. But it would require custom coding. No, that's not per month. Per month, it's going to be, it's less than $30 per month. 274 is what it costs you for a year. One good trade, guys. One trade pays for this software for a year. One good trade. It's the simplest, easiest, cleanest way to get to charts I've ever seen. Like I said in the beginning, if they told me tomorrow, I'm never going to say this to TC2000. If they told me tomorrow the price of TC2000 just doubled, I would pay it without a problem. Because it makes me money, guys. It's a tool that makes me money. I can count on it. I can use it. It's simple to understand. It's easy to work out. And by the way, any scan that I've ever created, any scan that I have that you want, I give them to you. They're yours, free. In fact, if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, well, probably not here in room four. There's probably nothing there. Um, the bottom right-hand corner in room one, room two, there's that little folder icon in the bottom right-hand corner on the border band. If you open that up, okay, in room two, room one, there's actually TC2000 scans already in there. We just give them away. Okay. 
Downtrending on the weekend, yes, possible failure pattern could be showing up here on the weekly, right? If this were to fail, break through this candle lower, that would show me a failure pattern here on the weekly for more lows in SQ. And as a matter of fact, lots of stocks are looking like, you just look at the diamonds. Diamonds looks the same way on the daily, or on the weekly. It's right at price resistance. Right there. If you look at the SPY, same way. Right there. Q's. Right there. Okay, so it's pretty common across the board um, in the markets. We see, you see that a lot. It's got to cross through. It's one of the reasons I think that the market needs to rest, consolidate, something like that, so it can build the energy to pop through. And by the way, that's not abnormal, okay? When we come out of big, long downtrends, let's go to the diamonds here, and I'm going to have to go to a, long, a little bit longer term chart. To show you this when we came out of the 2008 correction look what happened on this chart broke down rallied up into here had to rest by the way this is a, a seven day chart okay so this right here rested for the better part of a month right in here before we finally confirmed the hold of support and the rally at that point Several weeks of back and forth building a consolidation. It's a very typical pattern, very typical bottoming pattern. So is that what's happening over here? I don't know. Could we fail here and continue lower? Or could we consolidate here, build a price level to pop out of? Don't know. I will tell you on the daily, I don't see that big failure occurring yet. Okay, so we're looking for that consolidation. All right, and consolidations are not scary, guys. A lot of people think a consolidation is, you know, if the market consolidates, there's nothing you can do. Okay, look at these consolidations during this period in here in the diamonds. There was great money being made in the market during that consolidation period. Great money being made in the market during this consolidation period and across in this consolidation period and this consolidation period. Because for the stock to be, or for the index to be consolidating, that means that there's some stocks moving up, some stocks moving down. You just have to be the one to pick. Okay? To pick those stocks that are trending. Now you have a tool. That tells you when you're on the right side of the trend. Okay. F on the weekly, right there at resistance. On the daily, do you see a buy signal in there yet? Have we proven that we can hold this yet? No, we moved up. We broke down through it. Whoops. We moved up. Just a second, my stupid tool changed here. We moved up. We failed, broke right back down through it. Then came back. So what do we need here? What do we need? By the way, what's the trend in, the, in Ford? Hold on. There we go. Omnovia kicks my mic out every once in a while. What's the trend in Ford? Okay. So should I be in any hurry to buy Ford here?
Nope. I want stocks breaking their downtrend, not rallying up to their downtrend where they can fail again. I want stocks breaking their downtrend. Hold it as support and then show me buyers. Show me that uptrend. Uh, Chris, this is something that plagues a lot of traders. You know, I do this. Um, I do this a lot where I'm working with individual traders. Okay, here's here's a problem that a lot of traders have, and this is going to be the last thing I, I share tonight. A lot of the prob a lot of problem that traders have is they look at charts like this. They never take the time because I'm rushing. Oh my gosh, I'm going to miss out on this trade. I got to hurry. I got to rush. All we think about is the hard right edge of the chart. The hard right ed edge of the chart is not the best place to be looking for clues on the trade. Look at the picture of the chart. What is the chart telling you? Yes, we've crossed up, but we're still in a downtrend. So in my eyes, I'm not interested in this chart until it can break into an uptrend. Short term, if I could, if I were looking for a trade in here, just had to, just had to trade forward, I'd probably have to go to a four hour or a one hour to try and look for a good pattern. You can see right in here on the hourly, could you have traded forward on the hourly here? I would say yes. On the hourly, I see a stock kind of, it's questionable. Possible pop out of the box, no buy signal yet. Possible cup and handle here on the hourly. But guys, look at the full pattern of the chart, okay? Look at the full pattern of the chart. If we're trading this hourly, what are we looking at? Is the hourly trending here? Not yet. We need to, to set an uptrend. What did I say at the beginning? We have to make a low. We have to move up. We have to prove a price level, either with a consolidation or a pullback, and then show buyers stepping in. Until that occurs on this hourly, we do not have a proven trend. See how we did it here? Moved up, pulled back, buyers stepped up in here. We start proving this trend. There's our trend. We have to wait for the trade to come to us. Stop predicting the trade. All right, sound good? Hey guys, I want to thank you very much for being here tonight. I really do. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you got something out of this. Um, um, yes, you can install TC2000 on any device that you have. You can only be logged in to one at a time though. So I've got it in multiple places, but you can only be logged into your account one at a time. And pretty soon they will be coming out with a full mobile version. You'll be able to put the full TC2000 on your iPad, your tablets, whatever it is, and take your charts with you with all of your alerts and everything. Okay. Will do, Scott, and I do apologize about that. I missed a, I missed a coaching session on Monday, and I apologize. So everyone, please, please, 
Take a look at this indicator, put it on your charts, work through the charts, start identifying those trends and those patterns. I, I believe this will help you if you follow a few simple rules and use that indicator. So thanks for being here. Um, once again, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, would you please run over there and, and do that? We don't charge anything for these uh, public webinars. The only thing I ask is, hey, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, it doesn't cost you anything. There's over 450 videos over there now on YouTube that you could take advantage of. Okay. Awesome. Awesome, Ed. If anyone doesn't know what LTA is, it's a scanner that Ed is building. Um... Um, it's a live scanner, so it you don't have to run a scan. It's always running, okay, bringing you great trades. Um, putting this in, in the live scanner could be huge, guys. It could be really huge. All right, guys, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Um, I want everyone to have a great evening. I want you to all to have great success in your trading and never give up on yourself. I know a lot of you are struggling and I, I've been there. I've been there and I know how difficult that period of time is. But push through that, guys. Recommit yourself to your, to your charting. Recommit yourself to price action. And believe me, once you break through, it's worth the effort. Once you break through and can make a living in trading, it is definitely worth the effort, okay? So everyone have a great evening.